Hello, traders. How's everyone doing today? I'd like to also welcome our viewers from investing.com today. Uh, had a pretty good week yesterday. Thank you, Jerome, Jerome Powell. Okay, so earlier in the week we're talking about, in fact, yesterday, the 78.6 level, which is what the euro held. I mean, there were all kinds of things that uh, told me that this was possible. You know, I wasn't sure what the catalyst would be, but first of all, you had a throw over, see how it tried to get back inside the wedge and couldn't. But even though we probed to new lows, we were not confirming the new lows. And then bat once back inside the wedge, we got our upside breakout, talked about the possibility of that happening, the wedge. Uh, you know, I was uh, actually tweeted yesterday that uh, earlier in my trading career, if I didn't catch a turn like this, I would say I missed it. And nowadays, what I say is if I miss a turn like this, and although I catch a few more than I used to earlier, um, that it's just beginning. Okay, so uh, yeah, you may have missed the first move out of the hole, but really it's just beginning. And your mentality should be, okay, uh, I'm going to look for spots to get in. Yeah, nice old pullback yesterday. You know, all pullbacks, I think, to 1340 are going to be pretty well supported. Uh, you don't want to negate the breakout. So instead of saying, oh, I missed it, got in a field position, you say to yourself, you know what, this is just beginning. And now, uh, when I this was just a theory and a thought that the euro might be bottoming, now I have evidence, I have confirmations. Uh, I'm sure there are more confirmations to come, but your attitude is, okay, uh, it's just beginning. Uh, I need to get on board, put a piece on, hope you're early so that you have a chance to build a position because uh, this euro can uh, could have a long way to go on the upside. So here's your four hour. We start getting through here. The top of the wedge, again, it's 1480. Uh, there's resistance at 1550. And if we look at a daily, uh, same type of uh, uh, setup here, but why can't we retest all the way up here, previous highs? Actually, know some people that are looking for a 120 handle. So uh, on a one hour, it looks like, wow, am I late? But uh, you get to a daily and you're definitely not late. It's just beginning. Good morning, Amanda. How are you? My trading warrior sister. Okay, so uh, that's the euro, uh, similar situation. In fact, you know what's interesting is that the euro held at the 78.6, and then Blake and I were talking about retracements yesterday, and you know Blake uh, was talking about the 88.6 or 88.3, which very few people um, use, and that normally you, when you get a reaction off it, it's usually just a signal that we're going to consolidate the gains. So, you know, that could be true. Uh, we still need closes back under 96 to confirm the dollar high. Uh, but when I look, I look at it um, and you look at the COT and all the dollar bulls out there under 96, I think there's a shot for a 94 handle. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if... Uh, we see a 90, mid-92 handle before this dollar correction is over. Of course, it was very constructive for the market. The market doesn't like a strong uh, dollar, and we had this huge move yesterday in the S&Ps. And in fact, yesterday I talked about that some of the people I follow, and Greg, uh, the Wizard of Waves, was looking for higher levels, and uh, one of my good friends was saying 28.15 was coming, and it looks pretty good. So the, the shorts are beginning to get squeezed. The other side of the trade is uh, the yen, which has been very stubborn because it's been following yields, but yields sold off, uh, yields came down, and the yen really uh, put in a pretty negative day. It's looking very negative to me. It tested everyone's patience up here at 78.6, probably went 88.6. But to me, the the yen is very vulnerable. Um, it, you know, there is a possibility that uh, we could work our way all the way down towards 110. In fact, if you use Forex Analytics, 
um, and then you're a member and you go to the dashboard, you could take a look at some of the patterns in play and uh, there's Amanda again. And so, uh, you know, you have some people, oh, look at that, uh, Greg got long looking for 1260 in the gold. Okay. So I look, I have some agreement. Greg is bullish euro looking for 117. And then uh, you have uh, Andre uh, bearish yen positions coming back for him. And Greg is short uh, bearish the yen looking for 109. You know, some of these targets that I'm talking about. And uh, also, what you want to keep in mind is I know a lot of the viewers here at investing.com uh, have an equity. It's kind of the equities are their wheelhouse. They may not be FX traders, but uh, Forex analytics can help you too because uh, we do cover uh, the gold and we cover the S&Ps and we cover the bonds. So, um, you know, even if you don't want to trade the commodity itself, in fact, yesterday I mentioned, uh, you know, that I trade ETFs and I was talking about uh, a junior uh, ETF. It is uh, Nugget, which really is, you know, had a, had a great day. Okay, so you see it on the one hour. So before gold exploded, we were trading down here. Okay, so I still think there's plenty left that will take out these highs here in the gold, in the in nugget, and probably be heading up to I have targets um, that would give me a quality of this move from here. So it's up around here, uh, certain fib retracement, 17 and a half, almost $20. Gold goes 1270, 1280, maybe we could go to 22. So you can apply a lot of our strategies to ETFs, as you can see, you know, I look at a lot of different uh, equity issues and ETFs. So that's something uh, to keep in mind. Uh, gold is following through, uh, really has the best follow through today out of uh, anything better than Euro. Uh, the stocks uh, indices are giving back a portion of it, and yet gold is pushing to new highs. And a lot of people aren't even long yet because they're waiting for a breakout over, you know, 1237, 1240. But this is how we could get 1260 to 1280. Uh, the COT setup is still, you know, uh, record short positions. I think it's about time that they're really going to get squeezed. I'm not talking about a move to 1500 gold or 2000 gold. I'm just taking it a step at a time because I still believe even if we have a rally back to 1280, it may only be correcting this big decline and we get another decline. And the dollar could pull back uh, uh, substantially, but this not be the top in the dollar, but a top in the dollar. Uh, we have a great guest with us with Brexit on everyone's mind. That's a uh, equity trader, FX trader, Lydia Item Finkley at Faith Might will be with us. Cables are specialty. I'm going to ask her how she handles tape bombs that you get all the time. I, I just stopped trading it. You know, I'm, it looks like we had some, uh, a little bit of a tape bomb here. Uh, with the euro down 40 uh pound down 45 with the euro up okay and something else we talked about early in the week when the dollar was rallying is that uh the swiss wasn't okay and we all we got back to power we didn't even get back to the breakdown so swiss still looking negative and these moves uh you know i think we have 98 and a half 98 so don't feel like you missed it. Feel like now you know a higher probability of direction for a while and use market reactions to have exposure to short dollar positions, which could be long euro, short US dollar yen, uh, short uh, US dollar Swiss, um, Long Aussie, Aussie actually was a leader, kind of a clue for gold too. You know, we could have another 
hundred points, although now that I look at it, it's a potential three drive. But anyway, you didn't miss it. It's only beginning in my uh, opinion and markets don't move in straight lines. And I just think that we haven't even had the confirmation in the Dixie um, that I know Steve Volge wants, uh, closed it back under 96. So that hasn't happened. The trend hasn't even changed yet. So uh, the trend changes under here. So you're not late. You just have more reasons today than you had yesterday when it was a theory or a bias. And now you have the theory confirmed by price action. Okay, I wanna invite everyone to become part of our trading family. And uh, the link is right here. And after face ends, we have a, a private member chat where there's uh, usually at least 100 traders in there that are serious traders and respectful to each other traders. Uh, I really believe it's a great place to learn if you want to be a trader, to be around traders who uh, do it not as a hobby or as a second or third, uh, you know, avocation or vocation, but actually this is, you know, how they um, take care of themselves and uh, generate income to put a roof and food on the table for themselves and their family. And uh, there's many ways to skin a cat and uh, trying to choose the right broker sometimes can be pretty confusing. And that's why we have partnered up with Forest Park FX. And you can have your subscription paid for through your trading rebates. And in the US, you could have a check sent to you based upon your trading activity. So I uh, encourage you to get a hold of Trent and Justin. They're, I call them a broker of brokers. Uh, they have economy of scale, so they can negotiate good clearing rates that give you rebates instead of you going in there as an individual. So there are allies, there are sponsor. Um, they're a great resource for you when you're considering uh, having additional accounts or changing brokers. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna bring on Blake and uh, it's interesting how we were talking about the Dixie yesterday, Blake at 88.6 and uh, pretty good uh, reaction off that level. Yeah, you know, I, um, um, and good morning, uh, by hey, the way, buddy. Coach. Hey, uh, you know, I, I was <laughs> actually just, I was a little upset with the way that I traded the dollar yesterday and not, not, not because I didn't make money, because I did, and, and I made decent money too. I should have made a lot more money. I had it all planned out and I had, um, I had everything planned out and I, and I knew um, that we were going into this, uh, this um, PAL testimony uh, off the back of a very hawkish um, uh, vice chair speech just the, you know, just the day before. So, you know, we, we were going into this, this, this fed, you know, and it was a speech at the, at the, 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 the New York, um, uh, luncheon at the New York economic club or whatever the proper name is, excuse me. And I, I knew that there was a risk that he was going to be dovish. Um, the, you know, maybe backpedal a little bit of, um, of Clarita's comments and also for the lack of better terms, maybe succumb to some of this, the Trump pressures of, you know, Trump's been obviously hounding, uh, Jerome Powell and saying that I made a mistake and, you know, the feds, the feds, the cause of everything and putting the blame. Now the fed can say that they're independent as, uh, until they, they're blue in the face. But, you know, when you have the president of the United States, that's, that's really, you know, really, you know, trying to discredit the fed and, 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 and talking, really putting all the blame on the fed. Um, th it's got a way on his, psyche at some level you know and and like i said uh you, you you could you can you can deny it all you want and say that that well the fed is supposed to be independent blah 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 blah. anyway i think that that was a risk and on top of that u.s economic uh data has been slowing so uh 
and that's why when you look at like Clarita's comments the day before, and he was so hawkish, you're like, wow. Uh, I, I, I'm like, is he seeing something that I'm not seeing? And then, you know, Powell basically, you know, walked back everything and, and, and the dollar slumped. And because I knew that that was the risk, I was already prepared to short the dollar. But my, my mistake and my, my, aggravation doesn't come from making money or being short the dollar it wasn't it was for not pressing a little bit more aggressively being short the dollar because that was my bias it was my technical bias um being the 88 percent retracement that you were talking about it was all the wedges that we saw in the dollar and other currencies not not just not just the dollar index it was you know it was the look that we had in the euro at the bottom of the channel, the U.S. dollar Norwegian krona at the top of the wedge, um, the dollar Canadian, a failed rally attempt at the highs, possible double top. It, it was in, in, in the Aussie and the Kiwi being resilient, bouncing off of support. The Kiwi was already giving us the bull flag pattern. I, I had all the evidence in the world that the dollar was going to turn lower yesterday, and I didn't step on the gas enough are you there you can yeah. hear me okay yeah, all right I wasn't, yeah. my, my my office went quiet so oh okay um, and so i was just making sure that uh, i didn't lose um, you know blake uh, in perspective there are a lot of people that wish they weren't uh long the dollar in any way yesterday that were <laughs> yeah I, I mean i'm, I'm just I'm saying sure. that. I, yeah I do that too. I let a lot of windfalls and I could have been more aggressive and everything else. And, you know, I, I, I'm just saying, put to put it in perspective, you were the right way. But yeah, and yeah. We're, all, we're all our own worst critics. And we, I, we are. And, and, yeah. and, and, but that's the, the fact of the matter is that I just, I, I should have been more aggressive because all the stars had lined up yeah. yesterday. I know. And, you did. and uh, I just didn't, I didn't, I mean, like I said, I made money. I can't complain about making money. It was just I could have made a lot more and it would have been easy. And we knew, we knew going into yesterday that the dollar was positioned very uh, – it was it was off kilter anyway. It was way too many bulls out there. The bullish sentiment of the, the, the dollar, the bearish sentiment of the euro and the cable. Uh, and, and I didn't trade the cable long. And, and it's still trading heavy. I'm, I, I leave the cable alone right now probably for the next week and a half. But anyway – um, I just, I'm a little upset with the way that I traded it because I had it so right and I knew I was right and I didn't step on the gas. And, 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 and those are the times, especially when you have a whole week of very frustrating trade. And I say very frustrating trade because it was just slow and, um, grinding and, and you guys know, I've been playing this euro to you know inverted head and shoulder pattern and it was just like kind of slowly moving against me and i'm like ah so frustrating but i but like i said i made i made really good money being short the norwegian krona and uh and right. I, I did i managed to, to sell some us dollar swedish krona yesterday and um and, but but still like i said very frustrating but that's neither here nor there um yeah because if this, we're going to 118 or so blake you're going to have a chance to put the pedal to the metal again. Well, okay, so let's talk about that. So let's talk about okay. – well, well, let me talk about a couple of things. First first of all, um, you guys know that tomorrow you have to be here. Uh, oh, it, yeah. It, it, in, in exactly 20, uh, 24 hours and 40 minutes, you guys have to be here. Uh, uh, we're going to be hosting an interview with uh, Ronnie Schlapfer, which is – he, if you're a for, if you're an FX trader like me and you've been trading for 20 plus years like me, you've heard of the BBC documentary or seen it multiple times of the billion dollar day. Ronnie is one of the three traders that the BBC highlighted um, uh, uh, highlighted uh, on that documentary, and he did uh, he did like a, a, a radio. Uh, I talked to him yesterday. Uh, just to make sure his mic worked and everything. Uh, he did a radio interview, uh, like just shortly following the BBC, and that's the last interview he's done ever. So that was 1986. So, uh, you know, here we are 32 years later, and the, guy, the guy's been trading since 1974. 
all right because uh, i i actually uh, I'll, I'll let him tell you his whole story but, but you know but he is going to be doing an interview with uh i'm gonna i'm gonna host it since he, he is a he is a personal friend of mine um it's going to be epic um because he is going to talk about kind of how he got to where he's at uh some of the traders he knows which are going to be names that will blow your mind uh from an investment community standpoint who he personally knows and um and he is going to tell you kind of what he's seen has been successful qualities in the market and what how people have failed and why they have failed in his opinion and and i'm going to tell you guys right now he has seen more action in the markets than anybody sitting listening right now i can guarantee it unless i've got george soros listening to this webinar right at this moment which i'm pretty sure i don't uh he has eclipsed everybody here multiple times in the markets with the size and what he's seen around the world being from switzerland uh trading in japan um uh trading you know running a hedge fund uh pension fund uh family office and the people he runs around with and the people he talks to you cannot miss this interview tomorrow he is and and, and on, to, to top it all off he is probably one of the most amazing people i've ever met uh I, just extremely humble and um and, and so you have to be here tomorrow so i just you I, love him i do i mean he's all like right. one of those you, you you meet him and you're like my god he is like the he's like the the greatest person and you know um he's and, he, and he's, 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 he's willing he's willing to share his 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 knowledge with this community and it's that cool. is a huge benefit to everyone listening in tomorrow and everybody's it's going to be listening in you know for years to come on our recorded videos and whatnot uh it is it be, it's going to be beyond epic and and we'll probably go i'm assuming we're going to go for 45 minutes to an hour and um uh you know pro he, he's 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 got all the he's he's got all the time in the world tomorrow after the data so um Anyway, uh, if you haven't seen uh, a billion dollar day, watch it. It's 30 minutes. Go watch I it. I put the link up in Skype if you want to share it, Blake. Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, the YouTube part of it is the link. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, let me let me grab it really quick. Uh, in fact, the whole tweets there. I said Ticketmaster had run, uh, run out of seats. So, <laughs> well, ho hopefully we don't run out of seats. It, that is a risk tomorrow that there will be yeah. so many people uh, in here tomorrow that it will block you. So you, 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 you. I, I'm, I'm telling you guys that is a risk. So you're going to want to be here early for our analysis and, um, and just kind of keep your seat because there are going to be enough people in here that, uh, that. Because we, we 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 tap we tap out at a certain number, so um, just letting you guys know. All right, anyway, all right. That's that. I just I needed to get that out of the way because it's so important um, for the whole community tomorrow, and I hope you guys really enjoy it. Uh, I'm looking so forward to it. All right, so let's um let's talk a little bit about the markets today. Uh, so uh, you know we had discussed for the last several days that the euro dollar inverted head and shoulder pattern. Uh, you know, is is developing. It's a it's a complex because it's a cockeyed uh, sloping uh, neckline. So the shoulders are a little cockeyed as well. Um, a little bit further dip in the right shoulder. I stayed long the euro, uh, and then I I I've been buying it on dips now. Uh, I bought it this morning at 55. Sold it at uh, I bought it right here. And then uh, I sold it this morning at like 79, 77. I can't remember where I sold it, but I sold it somewhere in this neighborhood, not where we're at right now. But uh, but I will continue to buy dips in the euro going into tomorrow as long as we uh, as long as we uh, continue to stay above 113.50. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be uh, lucky enough to get any dips like that from here on out. Uh, the cable I'm. Just leaving alone. We did break out of this channel yesterday, but then we slumped right back again. And I think the cable is, you know, obviously something I'm just leaving around, leaving alone for the next week and a half. Uh, the Aussie, we're probing trend highs, and this is a big deal uh, going into tomorrow's uh, uh, meeting. Um, just because, hold on, really quick. 
just give me a second. I just need to. I picked up a little bit of crude earlier. I, I just you know take 40 cents out of it so I can focus on what I'm doing here. Um, so uh, and I'll go to crude here next, and I'll just show you why. Anyway, um, the Aussie dollar. Um, and by the way, I didn't tell anybody in the chat room I did that. I just picked up on a dip as Dale was speaking. Um, um, the uh, the Aussie dollar, uh, you know, is probing pretty key resistance going into the uh, the um, uh, 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 G20. And you know, if there's positive developments coming out of the G20, the Aussie is really probed to, or, 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 or or prepped to move higher. You can also look at this in in one of our traders in the chat room matter of fact brought it up yesterday that this is a you know inverted head and shoulder pattern which it quite possibly is i mean you could you could see a, a move really up towards the 76 cents 70 70 77 cents if uh if the us and uh and china patch up some of these um you know the, the you know disagreements if you will uh, on trade or at least make peace uh, near term and which I have already explained why I think is a risk going into tomorrow. Uh, let me cover up some. I shorted some U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. I've been I've been scalping in and out of this thing, so um, uh, just wanted to take some profits there. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the the dollar Canadian. Um, Possible risk of a double top, false breakout yesterday. Trend line uh, comes in around 132.2030. It's going to be really key support on the way back down. Just watch that Canadian, uh, especially with crude. Now, let's talk about crude. So, if you uh, use Forex analytics and you go to the live or update history, you go to WTI two hours ago, basic technical analysis read the intraday analysis. It says crude took the stops below the 50 level in Europe as we had expected. Because um, if you look at the previous analysis, crude is trapped in this very steep down channel. We are once again testing the 50 level, and stops are probably building below the figure. So longs be careful despite the oversold and divergent RSI. That was yesterday's analysis. Uh, this morning, um, but the lack of follow through and divergent intraday RSIs may, may allow for a bounce higher. That was crude two hours ago, and then, um, then crude ripped. Uh, you can see here's crude oil, right? So crude, right after that was released, it ripped higher, and I and I picked up crude. I guess I only made like you know 30 cents or whatever. But anyway, I was buying dips as Coach was speaking a little earlier, and uh, I just sold it again. But I think crude, you, you got to watch it. If crude breaks this resistance, which is the channel resistance, which you know roughly is, uh, you know I think this is where you start feeling more confident about a bigger bounce in crude, uh, about a break above 52.90, which I doubt is going to happen today. But you know with a false breakdown. There is a risk now that 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 you know over the next 24 hours we do this, and if there's a positive meeting between China and the U.S. and the, before the G20, a good you know you know nice little positive headlines Great. could you know. Uh, good morning. Hey. The low is the low is exactly at the 78.6 percent fib of the uh, June uh, 2017 low. Uh, to the high, so it was also a, a very nice retest of a good fib level. Awesome. Um, okay. Well, you know, with that being said, I'm going to pass it over to you, Steve, because it is uh, we 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 have data coming out here in two minutes, so uh, it's a perfect segue to here is Steve. Uh, you guys have a great one. I will see you tomorrow within 24 hours of right now. Uh, make sure you're here so you have a seat for uh, Epic. Um, epic uh, interview tomorrow with Ronnie Schlapper. So thanks, Steve. Thanks, everybody. And uh, thanks, Coach. Talk to you soon. You're welcome, buddy. Good hunting. Thank you, Blake. Today, Blake. See you later. Hey, thanks, Steve, Blake. Before you, Steve, before you get started, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to report that I don't think you have a shot coming in between the bromance of Blake and Ronnie. <laughs> I, know you, I know you've been trying for a while, but I, I think you need to let it go. It's okay. It's okay. I've already won no. the heart of of Stelio, so you know. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh, then you don't know what's happening with me. <laughs> All right. Uh, move, All moving right, on. That's 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 we, have, right. we have core PC right. in five seconds, so let's have a look. This, is, right. this right. is an important number for the Fed. They they always watch that, their preferred measure of inflation. And let's see. What oh, it's ticked down to 1.8 year on year. 
And okay. last That's... last month I revised down to 1.9. Remember the target is two roughly. So yeah. um, it seems to you know inflation seems to be peaking. Uh, obviously we need more more data to be sure about it, but it seems to be yeah. it's a little bit of, it's um, a little bit lower, of... but definitely that can uh, help the... with uh, dollar weakness. Uh, yeah. Accelerating, so in essence, it can help with yesterday's because if we if we, if we have a look at the DXY, you can see that yesterday we had an outside black candle, which is which in essence is quite a powerful reversal candle. We had already been talking that you know the move higher in the dollar uh, was lacking momentum. We're still holding within this channel, uh, but definitely lacking momentum. I mean, the upside momentum was uh, was waning. Was, was waning since August, actually, since this high, yeah. because you can see that the RSI we we got we got a high in August and then we surpassed that high once, twice, and you know RSI still didn't uh, manage to make it above uh, the previous high. So that was an you know that was a good indication that uh, you know th there is no strength to this dollar rally. Um, Blake already showed this very nice reversal that we're getting today exactly from the 78.6. That was actually the fun part is that I actually uh, got stopped out um, yesterday. I, I took some profits um, uh, on my crude uh, long, and uh, I got stopped out on the rest of it on break even. But I had left over one third of a position since I was building the previous one at the 78.6, which I had actually completely forgot to remove. <laughs> so I actually got triggered uh, long crude and then one third long crude, and that was. Uh, 100% by accident because I would have removed that. Um, but you know, sometimes you know you you make a mistake. Uh, you know, you forget something and it goes against you. This time I I, I turned lucky in that. So I'm going to hold this one third of a position from down here and 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 see what happens because I like the fact that we tacked this 78.6. I said it before from the uh, June low to the highs and the fact that we also once again as we did here. Uh, some people got bullish, and you know they 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 got run over intraday. So um, if we can pass above, if we can close above 52, uh, 20, let's say roughly, I think that then we're headed for a bigger um, corrective move um, uh, higher. But you know it's too early. Let's see. Uh, on the other hand, I'm seeing uh, you know the first cracks uh, here in the euro USD to the upside. But my preference, and I said so some time ago. My preference is this one. It's the USD Swiss. I think this was a textbook um, channel. That's why I also made a peep uh, here. This was a textbook um, bear flag. Had the um, weakest uh, recovery too, while the dollar was rallying this week. Yeah, it, it was a nice ascending wedge. Broke down, uh, gave us a nice bear flag. Broke down, and today at the highs of the day, we came, we came up, we pulled back to retest. Yeah. Uh, this. Um, so, um, you know, I I like it. I mean, I, I my I'm tar my first target is down here at 98.50. So, uh, you know, I think I think we have at least one more leg lower at the very very least. And I think that 98.50 is a conservative target. Of course, you know, let's see if we if we start building some momentum. I'm obviously um, only gonna uh, take out you know just a you know part of my. I'm gonna scale out some here but i'm gonna hold more because you know how it is i mean uh my short in in crude started as a position that i was looking for a corrective move lower and look how it ended up i mean you know a, a, everything starts i mean even a new uh, bear market can start as um as initially as a correction i'm not saying that that's the case i'm i'm actually um you know seeing uh, decent chances that this is a corrective move lower but uh, even if that's the case, we have a nice technical formation. It's easy to read, and we have a first target. And if you actually uh, sold it at the retest when I initiated the pattern in play, uh, there was also a very, very appealing reward to risk ratio because after yesterday's candlestick formation, which is an evening star formation, um, you have a very uh, good way of determining your risk, and that is you don't want to see uh, the high of uh you know yes this candle being taken out because most likely you're wrong there so you know there is there is a word ratio was very nice when we were back up at 99.60 so 
Um, <clears throat> having said that, um, uh, let me, uh, and Stelio, uh, I think we have to discuss that. Um, obviously, the, the Fed blinked, and Powell blinked yesterday. Um, th there's no question about that. Uh, probably, I'm guessing, uh, first of all, yeah, it's objective. We, uh, I have been talking about data going bad for some time now. Uh, on the other hand, I bet they don't want to get blamed uh, for the e economy going down the hill, uh, which eventually is going to happen. Um, and uh, on the other hand, um, uh, definitely we've uh, we've uh, seen uh, the, the, the pressures. By the way, we have the minutes today, which I think that after yesterday's uh, statements by Powell, um, um, you know, what the Fed minutes will, will give us today, it's old news and is irre irrelevant. In my opinion, uh, any uh, bullish dollar reaction due to the minutes, because, you know, there are a lot of algos that, is, that are trading the market. So initially they might go ahead and, you know, read the minutes, which are like, you know, uh, several days old and uh, they, they might like go and buy the dollar initially. I think you should completely ignore any any kind of dollar strength that's going to come uh, due to um, any uh, of that because simply because uh, the, the fresh news and what matters is what Paul said yesterday. Um, so, uh, you know, just I, I think we shouldn't even uh, I probably I'm not even going to read what, what they wrote because it's as I said, it's old news now. So what do you think about um, yesterday's uh, 180? Uh, degree turn from uh, Powell? Well, you know, we've talked about this before uh, months ago when when, um, when Trump started making noise about the Fed uh, hiking when it shouldn't and should this affect, will this affect the Fed? And we all said, remember that the Fed should be independent, but really in practice, we're all human beings and, you know, he, he's the, he is the Fed chairman, but Trump is, you know, the president. So there's there's going to be even some indirect pressure. I personally think that it's not just Trump's um, uh, bias for a weaker dollar and lower rates. It's also the fact that the numbers are slowly starting to to show, like we said before, you no, know, to plateau. And uh, so, you know, it 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 caught me by surprise a little bit. I didn't expect it yesterday, but um, uh, I'm, you know, it's not um, it's not something that doesn't make sense. Let's put it that way. So, you know, and we also have to see what the market is now pricing. So we're pricing a hike in December. But then I think one more next year and that's it. So now we yeah, get to uh, we, 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 we went from the part that we were uh, pricing in three hikes in 2019 and one yes. hike in uh, 2020 to yes. now pricing one uh, hike in 2019 and a rate cut in 2020. And if you ask me, I think, I think that's optimistic because by <laughs> 2020, we're going to have seen uh you know rates at least at zero if not negative uh and quantitative uh easing uh, if you're asking me i don't know when well, exactly it's gonna be in 2019 but in 2020 but you know if if i have a time horizon you know that includes 2020 i think yeah. that you know before the next recession we don't have more than that in yeah. any I mean, way you look at it i think this was always coming because the fed has been hiking and really nobody else is hiking so they can't just go alone forever you know they can't go to four percent let's say you know they have this is gonna this is gonna hurt the us and and we said before a strong but, dollar uh, hurts why, um, why, why, why can't it i mean uh, the greatest economy of all times <laughs> uh, can't afford more more than two percent rates that's that's really funny i mean uh, if you just read uh, Trump's uh, comments, you, you would you would think he's bipolar. I mean, uh, at the same time, he's declaring that this is the best economy ever. Like, not even two years ago, as a candidate, he was saying that this is the biggest bubble ever. Within one year, he started declaring that he's made this the best economy ever. And then he's blaming the Fed that the best economy ever can't afford more than 2% rates. Yeah. So... You know, I, I give up. I don't know what to say. Obviously, well, at, least, at least they have some ammunition now to cut when needed, you know, <laughs> at least at least they have that. In my opinion, they have zero ammunition, Stelio, simply put, because uh, ju just think of how much stimulus we needed after the first bubble bursted in 1999. Uh, then how much um, uh, uh, how much uh, stimulus we needed after the second bubble bursted in 2008. And just consider where we currently are, uh, Fed's balance sheet, 
uh, being still uh, above 4 trillion, um, rates being at merely 2% the previous time uh, that the crisis started, was it at 5 or 5.5, was it? Uh, in 2007, eight, what what was it? It's r uh, roughly five percent yeah, now. Somewhere there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this time it's not even going to be three percent, and now we have a bloated balance sheet. And not only that, if you remember, um, and I'm going to go straight to analysis after this. We don't need to talk more macro stuff because I know a lot of people just want the technical analysis. But it's always a good thing have you know having the broad um, picture in mind as well. And, uh, you know, um, add to that the fact that even when asked by the Congress uh, back then, Ben Bernanke uh, was saying, no, we're not monetizing debt because we don't intend to keep uh, the balance sheet of the Fed. Uh, we don't intend to keep, uh, you know, um, that in the balance sheet of the Fed. We, we, we intend to... Uh, you know, inflate the balance sheet for a you know short period of time, and then uh, we're going to sell off uh, you know the holdings. Uh, so it's not monetization of debt; it's like short-term relief. So now, um, when we go to the next recession, and it's uh, proven uh, that you know this is a one-way street, and once once you you go into this, once you take this path, there is no going back. Um, then, first of all, you have to admit that what you're doing is monetization of debt, that, you know, there is no time horizon for that. And, you know, since there has been no real uh, in between, since there has been no um, real uh, debt relief or whatever, um, you know, uh, I believe that sooner or later uh, the market is going to, um, to, to to start getting really scared of what's about to happen. And that's what, where, when I think that uh, the bottom might completely fall off the dollar. Anyhow, um, obviously the stock market yesterday, um, as as a reaction of that, had a, had a great day. It went uh, through the 26 uh, 90 level like it, like it was better because obviously you know short term reaction from the uh, participant was cheerleading. Uh, obviously, um, I, I do think I actually bought a little bit of the SPX. I wrote it in the chat room before. Because if you see it on the four-hour chart, I think that this is clearly, uh, you know, a bull flagging uh, reaction here. So in the short term, um, I, th I think that you know uh, the SPX can can push higher from here. Next area of resistance is 27.60. We have the 200 DMA, 27.85. Then obviously 28.12 because we have this. Let's let's call it like a double top. But personally, the closer we start getting to 28.70 the more eager I'm going to be in. I said it yesterday before we even had this run that uh, personally I would want to see prices take out the 28 uh, level area. I believe that a lot of people are going to start getting very bullish then, um, considering that you know this was another, uh, the, 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 mar the market participants have, have anyhow been um, uh, taught you know, to buy every single uh, deep and you know they're going to be happy once again that you know this is the tactic that keeps working. But I do believe that even if this is a corrective move lower, which is you know a very li likely scenario, um, it's going to be more complex just uh, than just this. So pull up uh, the weekly. Pull up the weekly for a minute, Steve. Absolutely. There we go. Okay, I see two drives. Don't you? Oh, just yeah. saying, uh, maybe we get one more to complete it uh, into nah, the spring. You don't think so? Huh? It's impossible. impossible. It's impossible, and I'm going to tell you why. Um, because uh, assuming a third drive, uh, we must make it above 29.35, which is right. likely, which is likely, but it okay. is extremely unlikely that we're going to make it all the way up, let's say, to 3,000 or whatever. And we're not going to surpass uh, this 69.50, um, um, uh, you know, reading on the RSI. It's okay. I mean, I mean, it's possible. I just uh, have an open especially, mind. Especially, if we uh, if we extend this trend line, I mean, a third drive would mean that we we would have to push that much higher and yeah. keep the RSI, let's say, roughly at 60, 60 something. 
Uh, mathematically speaking, I think it's a very, very, very low probability scenario. Otherwise, okay. if that was, if that peak was, you know, somewhat higher, I mean, if it was, let's say, at 70 something, I, I would be with you there. I mean, uh, you know, it, it would look uh, much, much likelier uh, okay. for, for that to happen. Okay. Um, so yeah, but you know, let's let's see. We'll, uh, I, I guess we'll. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll, like uh, everything, man, the tincture of time, time will tell. Exactly, exactly. So um, personally, I think that, you know, no matter what happens here, I think that the market participants can be caught uh, on the wrong side once again. Uh, for example, if we pass over here, I bet a lot of long positions uh, are going to start getting built. And in this case, I would like to see a more complex corrective, corrective pattern or at least, let's say, more choppy price action. So I believe that building a position uh, you know, start building a position within this area if we make it is going to be um, a good idea. Um, I believe it has a height, uh, a chance that it's going to give me the ability to start scaling out, you know, as we uh, move lower. Up until that point, um, I, I do see that there is a decent chance that we're going to keep, keep pushing uh, higher in uh, the short term, um, especially. Uh, if the dollar confirms uh, a breakdown from here, which you can see that it's once again toying with uh, this ascending channel, uh, that's that's definitely also going to act um, uh, as a uh, as a tailwind, right? So um, it's it's going to assist uh, whatever move we see to the upside. By the way, crude is at the highs of the day now. Having to do with metals, before we go to more effects, um, um, gold is now uh, testing this uh, soft uh, trend line resistance. I do think that if we make it above it, um, uh, Gregor's idea of this being uh, probably, I think he sees it as a double zigzag, uh, has merit. Um, and, you know, this is a very nice confluence of resistances up here at 1262 to 1265. Um, it, it's it's, it's, it's going to be a nice completion of a bigger, uh, corrective move because I'm still seeing this move as corrective. On the other hand, we still see that silver is refusing to play ball. So, you know, if silver keeps underperforming, it wouldn't even surprise me uh, if gold actually made it there and silver just ended up retesting uh, this descending triangles uh, resistance. I said it yesterday as well that obviously if, you, if, if you're looking for, a do for dollar weakness and the bounce in, in, in metals, uh, you know, gold should remain uh, among the two precious metals. Gold should remain your uh, weapon of choice because I think it has a much better chance of uh, still um, overperforming for a period of time, especially if, the, if we are, uh, you know, developing corrective moves. Uh, we know very well that usually overperformance of silver is generally bullish for metals, and I don't see the medium to long-term long picture in metals being bullish just yet. I think that uh, the market would probably first want to, um, you know, take out uh, the previous lows and then bottom out uh, some way. So, um, you know, that's uh, that's uh, simply the case and how I say it. Now, having to do with Aussie and Kiwi, that's exactly what we drew several days ago, that we might see a corrective move lower from here uh, you know, we didn't even make it again to the support level. We're now testing confluence of resistances. Um, I do think that uh, what I drew there, um, that, sorry, this is the Kiwi, uh, that, and then I'm going to go to the Aussie, that the Kiwi has a good chance of making it to another confluence of resistances, which is up here at uh, 70 cents, uh, 50. Uh, it's the 61.8% FIB, and if you go back, you can see that uh, this area has been uh, multiple times a support resistance. And if you check the Aussie, you're going to see that something equivalent here. I was looking perhaps for another pullback uh, towards uh, the 7160 area. We did pull back. We didn't make it down to the 7160 area, but now we're breaking above this resistance. So I do think that the next um, <clears throat> target worth mentioning of is, yeah, I know there is a 38% fee, but 74.50 uh, almost. Uh, but personally, you know, um, you know, from my personal experience, support resistance areas are even stronger than FIBs. So, yeah, perhaps the 38.2 will do the work uh, and it's still some distance away. 
But uh, I think that the 75 level, which has acted multiple times as a support resistance in the past, can act as a magnet as well. So um, uh, OZ USD, uh, uh, Kiwi, uh, they, they, they still look, uh, you know, rather good in the short term. Um, which um, obviously um, shows us that what I was saying yesterday, I spoke specifically about, about the pound OZ and the pound Kiwi. Um, this is what we drew several days ago, and I spoke about it yesterday as well, that there is one more low coming here. We're seeing this getting confirmed today in the pound Aussie. And if we go down to the pound Kiwi, you can see that pound Kiwi is also confirming this move uh, lower that we mentioned yesterday. But I would now start being a little bit careful because I think that, you know, we might make it a little bit lower from here, but at some point, uh, perhaps 183, um, 185, 183, we, we will find some kind of a low and then bounce higher uh, for a larger recovery because this uh, first leg down is already very mature. So as I, I, as I advised yesterday, personally, I would rather wait for one more low than a rebound and then uh, uh, looking to sell into strength uh, because uh, selling into this short-term recovery would have been a decent short-term trade, uh, especially if you look at it in, in the four-hour chart, you would see that you know we had textbook corrective moves higher. But since the trend, trend was quite mature, as I said, I think there are better money to be made after a stronger rebound higher um, because I think there's going to be at least one more leg uh, lower to follow. Uh, more or less the same applies for the uh, Euro um, Aussie and um, Euro Kiwi. I uh, showed those yesterday. Now, how do we do with the Euro pound? Because we haven't checked that in a couple of days. Um, this is what we drew last time we were looking at it. So that was like the previous week or the week before that. Um, perhaps a pullback down to retest this 88.50 area. Actually, this pullback ended up being a little bit deeper than that. Uh, but it looks likely that if we break above this descending channel, and as you see, we also have this horizontal um, resistance area. We've already been rejected twice by this 61.8% uh, FIB, which is at 89.30. I think that you know uh, a daily close above 89.30 is actually going to push the euro pound um, higher to at least retest the previous high. So 89.30, quite an important um, um, resistance. And I do think that it can accelerate afterwards a euro pound. Obviously, you know, toying around with the pound currently is a tricky game because we know that any given day uh, we can, um, you know, get, uh, whipsawed by any news bombs or whatever. But from a technical perspective, if I completely ignore the fact that uh, news-driven spikes uh, can mess around with uh, any uh, pound pair, um, and you know, if I was completely unaware of what's happening with Brexit and I, I was just looking at this chart, as I've said multiple times, this is cable, the pound versus the dollar, you know, it's. I think it's simple to interpret that this is a triangle and there should be at least one more thrust lower from this triangle. Now, I don't know how low this thrust can take us. It can just be like a small thrust to take out anybody that has taken a bullish position. So it can be like a thrust towards the 78.6 of the uh, post-Brexit low. And then we can have like a big reversal. Um, but, you know, uh, just by looking at the technical picture, I would expect that this triangle would break, even if that's in the short term, to the downside. Okay. Now, uh, personally, I'm staying away from it because I'd rather trade something that you know has less chance of uh, producing very erratic price action due to some statement or whatever else, uh, you know, some parliamentary vote or you know whatever else uh, happens. But uh, you know, I'm just you know, having a look at it and, you know, telling you what I'm saying. Now, uh, use this sec. I still have partial position here. Uh, the more the days pass, the less I like it because this looks like a consolidation, which, you know, can end up pushing to the upside once again before lower. But on the other hand, if, if you look at the USD knock, you can interpret this 
you know, quite a big reversal yesterday. Uh, if you see, if you take this intermittent trend line, you can even see that as an ascending uh, wedge that is breaking down. Uh, I know that Blake likes this uh, as well. Um, on the other hand, I want to see how it's going to react when it comes back, when it throws back, because uh, if we're talking about a bullish break, this is called a throwback and retests this broken trend line. So personally, uh, you know, I would be a little bit careful here. I think we can easily make it down to retest this uh, breakout level. Let's say it's currently at 840 something, 845, 846. Uh, but I want to see what's going to happen from there. Um, quite a nice reversal though, so I wouldn't blame anybody for being uh, short currently. Um, you just need to uh, be a little bit careful though. Um, having a look at the USDMXN, I think that the USDMXN looks much better than the USD SEC and the USD NOC. This is, and this is, coach, because I know that you love it, this is definitely a three drive formation, right? Otherwise, it's called a three drive formation. Otherwise, it's called in, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in technical analysis theory, it's called the double divergence. Um, so we are seeing a double divergence here because we had, you know, one more high here. RSI diverging, one more high after that, RSI diverging again. So a double divergence or a three drive formation in the USDMXN breaking down. So I do think that the USDMXN from a technical perspective looks better uh, from the USD NOC and the USD SEC uh, in the short term. And I think that was actually a yesterday's uh, chart of the day for Blake, if I remember right. So I, I'm, I'm totally with him in that it looks uh, quite, uh, quite nicely uh, played. Um, so now, obviously, if I zoom out, you can see that we are in an expanding uh, triangle, and I don't like expanding triangles simply because you can never build uh, a risk reward trade in an expanding triangle because you know you keep having uh, both lines diverging from each other. So uh, you know timing. Um, uh, you know, moves is is very hard because whenever you make it to the to the to the trend line again, you already have a, a move that's quite mature. But if you just focus on the short term, as I said, this is an ascending wedge. So in the short term, this looks like a nice uh, breakdown uh, from this formation. Now let me uh, open up the question box and see what we have. Uh, Okay, USD CAD. We have a question about USD CAD. I think that Blake showed that, but let's have a look at it. And then I had a request since before from for Amazon. Okay, so USD CAD. Yes, it does have the potential of of this being a double top. Uh, but you know, on the other hand, we still have the potential of actually pushing higher towards this um, ascending uh, channel resistance. Now, for me to turn bearish here, I would want to see this uh, ascending channel break to the downside. Definitely, definitely uh, a bearish day. The one we had yesterday uh, started up as quite bullish. Then it, it ended up being a shooting star. Um, RSI was already diverging. So in the short term, you know, a pullback seems uh, quite likely. But, uh, you know, we need to see more uh, than that to, to confirm. In general, the dollar looks like it can uh, it can end up pushing uh, lower. Uh, it, it lacks the momentum, but it still hasn't confirmed. So, you know, uh, keep in mind that it's a little bit premature. Uh, you know, if you're taking positions, uh, just keep that in mind so you adjust your, uh, you know, uh, risk reward equivalently or your position size or whatever you think. Now, nothing has changed in the DAX, by the way. It's still in what likely is um, a descending triangle. For this to become a bullish formation, we would want to see uh, this previous high at 11,650 uh, taken out. So we can actually then uh, look at it as a uh, double bottom. But until that happens, we have to treat this as um, a descending triangle and it has a high chance of uh, breaking lower. Um, this okay. So, uh, coach, you ha you yeah. have an interview today, right? 
Yeah, Lydia's with us today, Steve. Oh, yeah, 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 you've already told me. Is she here? Yes. Okay, perfect. So then I'm going to uh, pass it. To oh, uh, sorry. I had promised to have a look at Amazon. So give me a few seconds for Amazon. And uh, then I'm done. So uh, having to do with Amazon, a very nice reaction. Um, you know, after a very strong pullback, uh, personally, um, I would be looking for a more complex correction. Uh, it, it looks strong for now, but um, I would, you know, the closer we get to this horizontal resistance area, uh, I would be looking uh, to, um, if I was trading stocks, I would be looking for an opportunity to be short. I think the reward to risk ratio, the risk reward ratio is going to be appealing to see uh, one more uh, push lower. So that's uh, that's my uh, view in Amazon in, in two words. Bye. So thank you, coach, and enjoy the interview. Okay, buddy. Hi, Lydia. I'm going to make you the presenter now. Looking forward to speaking to the cable queen. Great trader, mentor, teacher, Lydia Item Finkley. Welcome back to FACE. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, great to great to have you back, Lydia. And you know, I think about you with what's happening in the UK and so forth. And where I'd like to get started is, you know, nobody knows, but the BOE and Kearney they put out a report of different scenarios depending upon the outcome of Brexit. And his most uh, bearish scenario would be, you know, disorderly could take the pound to parity with the dollar. Um, what do you have any kind of inclination or uh, belief how this is going to play out, Lydia? I mean, this is uh, history in the making in the next, what, 10, 15 trading days? It sure is. It is. Um, honestly, so when we were trading above 130 um, not too long ago, I started to feel like the uh, the market was overpricing um, a deal. Um, I think okay. that ultimately there will be a deal. Uh, I think I think there will be a deal. I just don't think it's going to be as good. Whatever, it, however it is shaped or fashioned or formed, it's not going to be as good as a deal as the market has had been pricing it to be. And that's why we're seeing this Interesting. fall in the pound across the board. I think the fact that there was a deal um made the the market a bit over exuberant and we saw the um, pound rally particularly in the past two two months but i believe now really that the market is going to be underwhelmed no matter what happens and so i'm not too concerned with the volatility and the price gyrations it's going to in my opinion, it's going to kill day traders, I think, or scalpers, more short-term traders, because you don't know which way it's going to whipsaw, and it is going to whipsaw. But if you're a, a swing trader um, right now, I think the direction, the, the ultimate direction in the market is actually very favorable for those of us who can catch, um, use the longer time, the, the bigger time frames, catch a great entry, and really um, hold it for, for your target profit. Okay, is your bias, uh, to me it sounds like your bias would be, uh, it'll be a deal that's under uh, underwhelming and maybe some bearishness comes into and some selling comes into cable um, uh, that day or for a few days. Is your bias uh, looking for long-term long entries should that scenario unfold? Um, no, I still think there's a lot of optimism in the market. I mean, we're still okay. trading above the support level at 127.75. Um, I think the market is expecting, well, I think traders in general or investors in general are expecting that kind of scenario where um, you kind of buy after the fact. Yeah. I, I don't think so. I think we're going to see long term weakness in the pound, um, quite okay. frankly. Um, Particularly as we head into some of these deadlines, I think there's talk now of extending the deadline. There's also talk of the prime minister resigning, and she's she's pushing against that. She's not going to resign. I don't think she's going to resign. Um, De but deadlines are starting to sound like red lines. <laughs> you know, have you noticed all these lines are you know they're made with invisible ink, aren't they? Right. Right, no kidding. Since the, I mean, since 2016, the target has constantly been moving. Um, so I think 
yeah, I think like this whole drive into 145 um, was this idea that a deal was going to be very good for um, the pound, good for the UK. And I think over um, what we've seen is that every deal that's come has come out or come into um, negotiations or has gone to parliament has just has always been um there's there's always been something that's made it not good enough and so it's just been my belief after after we got this correction to 133 really in the past couple of weeks um maybe in the past month I've just been really discerning that nothing is going to be a good deal this whole situation is just not it's not really going to be a great thing for Britain and there's starting to, like there's a few scattered reports that come out that the uh, um, GDP, the UK GDP is going to take a hit by 3%. And I mean, there's, you know, there's all kind of projections out there. But I think it's interesting for us as Forex traders is to watch how it affects the, um, the Bank of England, because they were keen on raising interest rates um, after even, I think, even as sentiment, you know, optimism started to creep there that the, you know, the economy had held up during, since the referendum and things were going okay. Things are going well. Uh, and so I think it's going to be interesting to see the Bank of England backpedal in the midst of some of like really the Fed, right? The really the Fed um, um, still on a path to raise interest rates. And I think that contrast is going to, um, and even that backpedaling because the market had been pricing in some interest rate hikes. Um, yeah, Paul, Paul backpedaled a little bit yesterday. So all these central bankers, uh, do they have unicycles? <laughs> uh, Absolutely, I have to keep it nimble. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, I have kind of a negative bias in the dollar for a little while. You know, the Dixie may be trading 94, maybe even 93 handle. So would you use the overall dollar uh, weakness, should that unfold, to look for position shorts in cable? So far, yes. Yeah, that's pretty much been, um, especially when we were getting those um, rallies into 130, um, those were prime opportunities. And so right now, like, I mean, while we're training around this this support level, that's been the case. I mean, every time we, we kind of bounce off of out of uh, 127.75, even into 127, we got some jabs lower yesterday yeah. and week. Um, yeah, we we still we still see rallies in cable being met with sellers, and I think that's pretty much the scenario. It's not been really pound strength so much as it's been dollar weakness, and mm -hmm. seeing you know sellers step in um, versus the pound and versus the euro too. Well, you're say you. I've heard you say how much cable loves sixty one eight, and that looks to be the level that it's holding so far. Uh, do, uh, do you have any zones, maybe beneath one thirty three fifty, where it might be an attractive short? Where it be attractive short? I think we got to get below. Um, okay, you want the confirmation of the breakdown. You don't want to sell. I rally. do. You'll just go with the breakdown. All right. I mean, if you want to go below a zone, you want a confirmation of this break. Um, otherwise, you know, I I prefer, um, oops, I prefer rallies, really. So um, it's been this. This was the 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 drive last week where yeah. we had the announcement. Well, not last week. Maybe it was a two weeks already. Yeah, yeah. two weeks now where we had the announcements um, from the prime minister. And um, a couple people had resigned after that. And so we had this drive lower. And all of this consolidation in the past week has really been just a FIB. It's been a consolidation into these FIB levels. And so I've been, uh, I've been adding really at these, at these levels. So at these highs, I've been adding. So I think I yesterday's, was it yesterday's, two days ago, Monday's, uh, Monday's drive into 2860, I was actually positioned to go short closer into 2129, which was the 50% fib because we had this spike yeah. um, the week before, but it turned over nicely. Um, I like that it was testing the broken support. And then we got this, um, this move higher, which again, fell right back over. So uh, for me, it's been about selling rallies as opposed to trying to catch it on a downside. I think if you wait for the downside break, it might be um, a little bit too late because I'm not sure how low this will go. 
Um, I think right now, really just waiting to, to test these lows at 127. And ultimately, I think will we see it on this 240? We might see it better back on the weekly. Yeah. But um, really trying to get a break below this this 126.50. This is a 126.39, 125.89. So I'm really looking for us to get below this zone. So I don't know. I know I have a lot of lines, but if you can see, really the big one is 127.75 where we've been pivoting around. But the next jab here is really that 126.30 level. And so this is our zone. And, you know, um, back in August when we traded in here, we bounced very nicely, finally, back to 133.50. And so this is where we're contending. We still have a lot of bids in here, I think, because, um, like you said, Dale, on dollar, the anticipation of dollar weakness, the right, anticipation right. that there will be a pause from the Fed um, after a couple, uh, in a couple weeks after, after the December uh, meeting. So I think that's what we're seeing here. But, and so this is just our support zone. Um, it looks I, like if it gives away, Lydia, uh, the high at 144, the recent lows, uh, 27, call it 17, that on a it measured 17, uh, 100 handles lower under 127 gives you 110. 110 in cable? Yeah. You know, I can't. If you that. have a, well, if you have a quality from the high in April to the low last summer, and then the best the rally did was three and a half. So you subtract uh, the wave down, the first wave down from 33 and a half, 116.50. Just an eyeball look. If we have a similar decline to what we had last spring in 2018 into the mm -hmm. fall from 133 and a half. I will say between you and I that I do think we're going to revisit the 2017 lows. That's okay. what I do. Well, I, well, I other people are listening. It's supposed <laughs> to be classified. This is between you. <laughs> uh, okay. No. Hey, everyone else, <laughs> mute, mute us, <laughs> till uh, we can exchange our secret ideas together. All right. All right. So we kind of well, have this break. So we we were we broke 160. You know the 61A. So that to, that's a signal for a reversal, but we got to contend with all this support. And so that's why we're going to see this right. bouncing, bouncing around. But to me, we're, we're a reversal is underway. It's underway. And so it's just okay. a matter of, um, in, you know, for my trading style, it's a matter of catching the FIB moves. And because I believe that, um, pound versus the dollar is a carry. I think a lot of people can just hold this thing. You can just hold and be patient with it. Um, really but you can only do that when you get a great entry and you can only get a great entry if you're if you're selling rallies versus trying to find a confirmation on the break because if you thought this looked like a confirmation on a break you got you know you got yeah. railroad yeah uh -huh. <laughs> yeah mr market's very mean because he always yeah. tries to take out as many people as possible before the move they're looking for happens yeah. then most likely without them oh yes exactly. what a mean guy huh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, why don't we take a look at uh, some of the crosses? I'll be very interested to see where cable is at uh, when I this Dixie correction is over. Uh, it may end up being the preferred short. So, um, okay, EG kind of trying to make some hay out of, uh, you know, the problems in the UK yeah. comparatively. So, uh, you know, uh, maybe... Uh, we're going to have a continuation move, especially if we get over that 89 level, huh? Yeah, you know, 30. I think so. And um, I, this one, this is where I, this one I did get shaken out of because when we dropped to 88.50, um, and you know, it's the support level. It, it's a big time support level we've we've held in the past and um, before a break, but I didn't take into account the fibs on that on on that drive and this was the same drive that we saw in um in um in the pound dollar um in the euro pound here uh to the upside um but you know this was just a fib move it's a, it's a nice little fib move and i do think if this one goes higher i anticipate yeah. that we're going to revisit um 9050 which is okay. really the top of the range as we get back here this is really you know the top of the range is 90 here um, mm -hmm. I think we can go into 90.50 and really see what if pound weakness 
takes out the um, the high in August at uh, 91. Um, so yeah. that's really where I'm anticipating. This one... Um, Probably guess, a couple of buy stops up there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. You I'm, know, I'm, position I'm, shorts uh, probably thrown in the towel there. Euro. Yeah, exactly. Oh, for sure. And, you know, we take oh. out these stops. We can get a we can get a quick move, you know, back to the 2017 highs. So yeah, I, this consolidation finally breaks loose. Uh, between you and I, I concur, Professor. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, Guppy, because I know that uh, you're kind of a negative view on U.S. dollar yen. Uh, you know, so uh, mm -hmm. I'm surprised. I I, I think you're probably bearish this thing huh yeah i am i am so just looking at this uh weekly this hold this hold at 140 which was the 50 percent of the rally um the fact that we haven't been able to break above 150 stayed below it quite nicely um for me uh, as a trader for of uh, the fibs we're going to get another move that that sees us below 140 um so the longer we stay below here, I mean, to me, this is just just a waiting for this to move to move quite lower. Um, I think we can move here, so we zoom in and really after this another again this this is the yeah. um, announcement or deal announcement. These spikes higher and have just really been fib moves. So again, people are just you're just trying, like you said, especially this time of year. Mr. Market trying to shake folks out um, and really oh, yeah. just consistent to the low to lows. We should get new lows here. Um, yeah, you got to this time of year. That's a great point, Lydia. You really have yeah. to let your trades breathe. Yeah. Or you're going to be, uh, you know, picked off right the market, wrong the trade, you know, wrong the trade over and over again. Yeah. So uh, this is. Yeah. yeah. So. Or use less leverage when use mm -hmm. wider stops. Mm -hmm. So, uh, okay, uh, I'd be interested in uh, pound uh, commodity currency view with so what's my, been happening. Go ahead. So my favorite one has been the pound cat, to be honest. So this is okay. the one I have been trading over the Aussie and the Kiwi lately. Um, even though there's been some great moves, particularly in the Kiwi, but um, this one has been my favorite mostly because it's a range bound with a bias to the downside because um, because of the pound. Um, I also think that the Bank of Canada is a bit more hawkish than um, than the market appreciates, and def obviously much more so than um, than the Bank of England. So uh, I've been liking shorts up here at 72, 7250. This was the Brexit drive lower, and really. Um, I've just been adding above 170. So every time we're getting above 170, I wonder if I have a fit. Yeah, because just like everything else, after after that announcement, we've been seeing um, these this consolidations um, and yeah. taking it to this fib. And it's been, you know, folks will say that it's range bound. I just think that um, if there is a consolidation period, and we're we uh, basically yeah. everyone's just kind of waiting to see what deal comes next for the pound so this um if you're a short term if you're i don't know it works for short-term traders i think there's some well-defined ranges within um on these shorter time frames i think there's some nice nice ranges on a couple of these pairs um but if you're not patient enough to get a a, a favorable entry this is not the pair. Uh, this is not really the currency with the pound to trade. So, you know, a lot of people ask me, what are you doing with the Brexit, with the news? I mean, I'm doing what I've always done, um, which is wait for technical setups to show themselves and, Beautiful. and, and take profits or when they meet their target. So nothing about my trading has changed. I would say that, um, I've been more patient. I've been actually more, let's say, persistent because um, like when we had this, I don't know if you all remember two weeks ago when um, prime minister came out and then she went back in and then parliament said yes and then they said no and then people resigned. And this, we had all this choppy yeah. volatility in 48 hours. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, would, I was going short 
and getting stopped out. And I, I was going short and I would move my stop to break even because I mean, you know, when it when it, we got right. these down and I get stopped out, I go short again when I was um, and finally we got this drive lower. So I was reflecting on that because I remember five, seven, ten years ago, the younger trader in me would have flipped long and gotten killed, you know, because <laughs> I would have gone short, got stopped out on when it came back up and I would have flipped short to try to, oh, it's going to go back up and no, it's still down. So what I would say is be persistent in your views. Don't let the volatility make you flip on a whim. And I think that's what a lot of us do when we're, especially when we're new to these markets. Yeah, that's a, in particular. that's a pearl. That's a pearl because, you know, I mean, I came in this week bearish a dollar and uh, there are a few times I was ready to lose my conviction about it. Uh, and uh, you really have to um, hold on to your convictions yeah. during those times. And you're and uh, and pros, you know, a lot of amateurs, when they get stopped out of a position, they blame it on the instrument. They go, oh, I got burned in the pound. No, mm -hmm. you're, you were, you're, the trade was wrong. Mm -hmm. And then they, they look at another pair because, you know, it reminds them, you know, well, I'm not going to lose money in the pound again. I'm just mm -hmm. talking about, you know, real, oh, yeah. real chaotic psychology. So uh, professionals will stay with the market uh, even after a couple of uh, unsuccessful entries, if they still believe in the trade. So right, nice, right. nice work. Yeah, I also want to say that uh, I remember, and I think we talked, last time we talked was before the October uh, sell-off in equities. And, uh, you know, I know that you also uh, are an RIA and you were, uh, you know, being patient and it was lonely for people to be patient, uh, saying there'll be a time where there'll be uh, stocks will be offered for sale yeah. where I could put cash back to work. So uh, that was a great call, Lydia. Have you put your cash back mm -hmm. to work or are you still ca you're still cautious here? I'm still cautious. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that as long as we're below this um, 72, okay, we've, we've popped back up today. Yeah, but I was cautious as we were still below um, I could bet on the daily, but as we were yeah. still below 7220, especially um last, especially last week, I was really surprised at the weakness last week. Um, so still cautious, but yeah, I honestly the um, I think that this is a buy the dip scenario, and I think you have to be cautiously doing so. I don't okay. think that this is a um capitulation or. Uh, I'd love to see a move to one to, uh, to 2,500 in the in the S&P. I, mean, I would love to see that. But okay. you know, you see what the market is doing, and you and you take what it gives. Maybe we're going to get a Santa Claus rally, and we get a sell off in January, as we've kind of done the last two years. So um, I'm still cautious. We're we're um we're in lightly, so not a huge move of money but we're, we're we we can with we can dabble in on this dip i think it's a nice dip to 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 work um i thought i really wanted to see some kind of move lower after last week's weakness but mm -hmm. um we're getting a pop here and so we'll see if that lasts we've had a couple of pops in the last several trading weeks so yeah um, so we can really get decisively above this 2800 level and really these these highs up here at 2810, 2815, um, it's really still, there's still uh, a chance that the market can turn over and move lower. But okay. right now, it's pretty constructive. Yeah, great call. So um, I look at uh, uh, this time as being a, a good time for you to show your website and let the viewers, listeners know uh, how they could find you and uh, what you have to offer at Faith Might FX. Thank you. Yes. So if you come to my blog, faithmightfx.com, um, you can learn. You can learn with me. And so I do do some mentoring. Um, I do do mentoring and coaching um, with traders um, wherever they are on their skill level. And um, you can look out for this beginning class turning into uh, a more online piece where you can do it at your own pace as opposed with meeting with me one on one and then leaving the intermediate and advanced really for that one on one um, interaction 
or um, Dale mentioned my the IRA. Um, you can uh, have money with me to ma uh, for to manage or just get investment advice, and you can see more about that on the firm's website, FM Capital Group. Um, yeah, and uh, as always, follow me on Twitter um, as well. I'm also on Faith, um, Instagram, and that's just Faith Might. Um, okay. I think you know, a couple of you have been coming to me at Faith Might FX, which I do have that handle, but I don't do anything with it anymore, or at least with it currently. So on the social media, I am Faith Might. And faith faith Mike has mighty faith. My <laughs> trading warrior sister, <laughs> Lydia, thank you so much for uh, coming here today. And I wish you and yours a, a Merry Christmas, a great holiday season, and may pips rain down on you like snowflakes during a thank blizzard. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Dale. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, all right Lydia. Thank you too. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Lydia. Thanks, everyone. Uh, all right. Uh, that's a wrap for us today. Don't forget, we have Ronnie tomorrow. Uh, Lydia, you probably want to see this guy because, you know, Blake, uh, if Blake uh, uh, thinks the world of the guy, uh, it, it should be, yeah, it should be a, pr a great interview. So, okay. uh, all right. So, uh, I hope everyone had uh, at least caught a piece of dollar weakness this week and encouraged people to, uh, you know, follow. Lydia at the minimum and we'll wrap it up TGIF in a big way with Ronnie so uh, good hunting everybody thank you investing.com for hanging out with us today you're welcome Marius and remember most of all don't just count your pips count your blessings and we'll see everyone to wrap up the week tomorrow adios my trading warrior brothers and sisters enjoy the rest of your day